Does anyone here like books? Because I, uh, I, I brought books. Last year was a phenomenal reading year. I ended up reading 103 books, bringing my total up to 1,252 books ever since I started counting uh, way back in 2014. And that's with accompanying notes for all of those books. Um, so I've got thousands of pages of notes on all of those books and like they changed everything for me. I've gone into detail elsewhere about the best books of 2023. I've actually got another video coming up uh, really soon on this channel to really kind of just hammer it but this video is going to be a lot more informal not going to do a bunch of like crazy editing you won't see any like lasers and you know fire breathing dragons maybe one or two uh, but i'm just going to go through the books that i received uh for uh, for christmas this year and uh, i know like they always say that it's you know more blessed to you know to give than to receive but i received some incredible books this year and it was freaking blessed uh, let me tell you and then at the end, I've got a book that I bought for myself for Christmas, and it's one of the books I'm most looking forward to in like like my entire TBR. It, like this is like the book that I, I want to get to, and it's uh, I'm gonna save that towards the end and talk about what I'm I'm reading now. Uh, but these right here are the uh, the books that I got for Christmas, and I'll start off with uh, the first one, and it's uh, it's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, and it's one that I, I expected it to be good, but I really didn't expect to uh, to love it this much, and I think it's just a vitally important book about slowing down and simplicity it's got a heavy sort of religious theme to it um, the guy like the author is a pastor like it's not for everybody but I wouldn't say that I like strongly identify with Christianity or anything I just I can appreciate a good book from a good person and you know coming from a good place and uh, so like that's what this book definitely is and like I said it, it's vitally important it's like supremely helpful and uh, you know like this Jesus guy was like actually pretty cool and like I'm not even joking like I, I am basically of the persuasion that you know he was a real person and actually existed I'll, I'll grant that much and like if even like half of the things that he you know said or like was about uh, were like tr were true then like I basically think he's one of or he was one of like the best people to ever live and like he's absolutely worth following regardless of whether you believe in like the literal truth of what he was saying and anyway so if you can get sort of past that like this book is phenomenal and uh and yeah and then there's this one it's a, a biography of uh, leonardo da vinci uh by walter isaacson it's the first walter isaacson biography that uh, i will have ever read um i did read a um a great biography of michelangelo uh, early last year, it was like the fourth book I finished last year, and uh, it's by this guy named Miles J. Unger, which is really phenomenal. And uh, so Leonardo and Michelangelo, they were around, basically around the same time, they, they knew each other. And uh, But I, I know basically nothing about Da Vinci, even though he was like this you know, brilliant inventor who like imagined things that wouldn't become true, like physical realities for hundreds of years. Like he was literally centuries ahead of his time and just a brilliant inventor, brilliant you know, human being. And uh, like, I, it's a major blind spot um, of mine intellectually that I know like nothing about him. And like, there's gonna be a ton of great stuff in here about the creative process and even like productivity and coming up with good ideas and executing them. And, uh, and yeah, so like, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm also gonna read Isaacson's uh, Musk uh, biography. Um, I read another uh, biography of Elon uh, a couple years ago, I think in 2015, uh, by Ashley Vance. It's just called Elon Musk. And uh, yeah, that one's really good too. But that was like, I mean, that's almost 10 years ago. Um, so this one is like updated. It's going to be like, man. And then there's this book. And uh, so this is a, a biography of a guy that uh, you may not have heard of. But again, he's like behind uh, so many of like the like astounding technological innovations um, that we've all you know lived through in the last century. Like he was involved and in, uh, in like in an awful lot of them. And just a brilliant mind, brilliant inventor. And uh, his name is uh, Buckminster Fuller. And uh, so you may know of uh, geodesic domes. Um, that was like that was his thing and uh, and like that's just scratching the surface and like I'm not really sort of math oriented like I'm not I'm not great at it <laughs> it's like the the simplest math like you know I hire other people to do like this math 
stuff. Uh, my calculator app stays on most of the time. Like it's within easy reach and for like the simplest stuff. So you won't catch me discoursing on quadratic equations or anything like that. Um, I just, I don't think that way. I, I don't think in three dimensional space um, like this guy does or did. Um, but uh, yeah, he's just a brilliant dude. And like just learning about the, the, the lives and ideas of the most brilliant people ever to have lived. Like it's not going to be a waste of time. It's like 500 pages. It'll take me, you know, probably a couple of days of solid reading, probably spread out uh, while I read uh, different books, uh, which is what I do an awful lot. I, I don't tend to read like one book straight through. I've always got like a few books on the go. And uh, and actually, like I wasn't planning on talking about this, but uh, it's, it's a good chance to just sort of like offer a reading tip. Um, so like I've read, you know, 1200 books in the last, you know, 10 years. I know a thing or two about you know, like a thing or two when it comes to reading more books. And uh, one of like the best uh, things that you can do, I think, is to uh, switch up the formats at the same time and uh, just have different books on the go. Uh, because like if you, like for example, I, I love um, Charles Bukowski, um, his like poetry and uh, William Blake, you know, all those guys. Um, but like, I'm not always going to be in the mood to read a book of poetry. You know, like, sometimes I want, or a lot of times, uh, you know, I'm more interested in reading a business book, like, I, I, or like a, like a story, like some, like, novel, like, at the end of the night when I'm about to go to bed. I don't want to read, you know, a business book, like, right when I'm about to fall asleep. Um, so having all of these different books on the go uh, will let you sort of, you know, go in and out between... Uh, different books based on you know where you are <laughs> and uh, like where your your mental state is at and like what kind of you know what kind of time you have and ability to focus in certain situations and so it's really good to uh, to have and uh, and not only that like say you know say you're going someplace where it's not the easiest thing to take like a physical book with you I mean like the uh, like the the Da Vinci uh, bio I mean this is like this is a this is a brick <laughs> and I mean speaking of bricks we got uh, Don Quixote over here it's like 900 pages like you're not going to carry this with you all the time but you can carry your phone with you that has thousands of books in it and uh, and yeah you can do that everywhere um, so I like to switch it up between formats have like a physical book and an ebook at the same time, audiobooks for you know light cardio at the gym. Um, so it can really help you get out of a reading slump and help you just just read a lot more. And like before you say that like oh I could never like switch focus like that you know several times throughout the day you know just I would argue that you know you should think back to when you were in school you, you didn't have like a month of math classes and then a month of English classes you had you know math in the morning and English in the afternoon like you were full capable of switching between subjects and you know most of us uh, graduated and like are you know able to, uh, to to do that right so you know you're a lot smarter um, and a lot more capable than you give yourself credit for and I mean not just in reading but that's just like a, a whole other uh, video topic but yeah that was an unplanned uh, digression there but it's important to say and it could really help you read a lot more books and the last one I got for Christmas is a, a book of essays by uh, David Sedaris and it's uh, one of his more popular uh, books it's called me talk pretty one day and it's 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 pretty good I'm only I think I finished maybe five or six of the essays and like you know, some of them are funnier than others, uh, but they're all really good. They're all well structured, well put together. He can really write, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it, and uh, I'm really enjoying it. And some of it is like laugh out loud funny, and some of it's just kind of like interesting, and some of it's like, eh. But overall, I'm glad I'm reading it. And uh, which brings me to the book that I bought myself, and I cannot wait to dive into this one and luckily for me I don't have to <laughs> you know I don't like this is what I do full time I read books and I talk about them I don't have a job I don't answer to anyone um, so I can just read this book when I want to and I want to it's called the library of fragile history and uh, there are lots of incredible books about libraries and this one looks like it's going to be one of my favorites but uh, there's two more uh, that I actually no three more that I want to mention and uh, one of them is the library book by Susan Orlean um, again it's like a history of libraries but specifically this giant library fire that destroyed the central LA library in uh, 1986 and it's like this mystery story of like who like who set the fire but in the context of like all libraries everywhere and what they mean to people uh, it was just spectacular um, there's another one also called the library by Stuart Kells 
and a third one it's called a history of reading by alberto manguel and uh it was just one of the best books that like i've ever read um but you know specifically about reading it was like it's so memorable it's just it stuck with me ever since i read it i recommend it constantly um it's one of those books that like i'll never give away or you know like sell to anyone like this is gonna be on my shelf uh for my entire life uh it's called a history of reading alberto manguel uh receives one of my highest recommendations and that's out of 1200 books and if you're like me you can't get enough books i've got three more for you because why not uh, i wasn't planning on talking so long uh, but here we are um, okay so uh, i'll start with the, the brick here <laughs> so i don't have to keep holding it uh it's the one i mentioned before it's don quixote uh, i started it last year i'm on like page 200 i'm gonna finish it this year and uh, it's it's wonderful it's just a spectacular book and it came out like 1615 or something like that and so it's been around for 400 years uh, but when you're reading it you're struck by the fact that like all the like it's just as funny and, <laughs> and heartfelt and just it's wonderful um like the jokes still hold up after like 400 years and like you just like it, like i don't i'm not entirely sure whether like this like this don quixote character actually like i'm pretty sure he existed somewhere like and like even though like that's obviously not true like he's a like a figment of miguel cervantes in, uh, imagination like he did not exist like there's no such thing as like man um, like Sancho Panza never existed. Don Quixote never existed. Uh, but in my mind and my heart uh, and in my memory and my imagination, they absolutely do. And yeah, Don Quixote, man, it's going to be one of my favorites. Um, let's see. Okay, so my friend Ryan, um, he sent me uh, his latest book and it's not out yet, um, but it's called Become Who You Are. And uh, I read his uh, first book. Um, I mentioned in the acknowledgement section, uh, which is neither here nor there. And his first book is called Designing the Mind, uh, which was spectacular. It's doing really well on Amazon too. And uh, like he's not, uh, I think like it's a self-published book, right? Um, so it's not like, he, he doesn't have the benefit of like this huge publishing house, like, you know, backing this book. It's basically word of mouth, like people like finding out how good this book is and reading it themselves and like posting reviews and sharing it. And uh, so yeah, it's called Designing the Mind. I've read it uh, last year, no, two years ago maybe even two years ago, maybe three years ago. Uh, but anyway, it's phenomenal. Um, so, and Become Who You Are is one I just finished. It's uh, it's really good too. And my friend Jane Kim Yu, uh, she sent uh, me this book. It's uh, called uh, Journey of Awakening and Higher Consciousness. And uh, she is just like, she's just like intelligent and kind and honest. And uh, she's a wonderful writer. And like what comes through is that like she, she wants the best for the people who are reading her books. And like, it's like, that's, like when an author actually cares about you like they they care about how you engage with their book and like they want your your life to go better because you found their book um like that's so you know patently obvious and uh it's just something that you, you that you feel uh, when you read uh, jane's book and uh, so yeah i'm really enjoying that too i am going to stop myself <laughs> my full reading list is in the video description as well as links for all of these books and if you're wondering how I find time to read all these books, uh, one, it's priorities. Two, it's, you know, reading several books at the same time, like we talked about earlier. Uh, but it's also, you know, intelligent, like, you know, masterful, you know, time management strategies, uh, which I have developed and honed and, you know, damn near perfected over the last 10 years. And I've put all of my knowledge um, together in one place and uh, into an online course. It's called Time Mastery, and you can find the links for that uh, down in the video description. In the course, I lay out 52 mindset strategies and tactics that I use myself like every single day like I actually do this stuff too that I'm recommending that you do as well and it's you know directly translated into me being able to read you know 100 plus books every single year run my business become a fitness model um, do all of these things and like still see my family and like just make my life what I wanted it to be and you know not answer to anyone just be so self-directed and free and like it all comes down to gaining control of your time, which is exactly what uh, what this course is designed to uh, to help you do. And so you can find that down below. A whole bunch of other bookish uh, stuff down there. 
Uh, but thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one. And uh, specifically, there's one that I think you might actually enjoy. And uh, it's called the, uh, the Seven Books That I'd Sell My Own Mother uh, to Read Again for the First Time. And uh, I loved making this video. And these are seven of my absolute favorite books of all time. And uh, so I'll put the link um, to that video uh, right here at the end of the screen. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. And uh, hey, happy reading. Make mine while you sit in there complaining. I'll be training while you sit in there just waiting. I'm creating. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I think that I'm unstoppable.